Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Now the pandemic burnout is fairly real and with Christmas coming along, I wanted to do a kind of holiday celebrating, happy, sporty history video moment. So today I'm going to be covering the Great War or the World War I uh, Christmas truces. Now I know it doesn't sound very sporty, but I will get into why it's sporty in a bit. But during this one day truce, on the front line trenches of the Great War, soldiers from both sides got together for a few moments and celebrated Christmas. Now this moment is a defining moment kind of in the history of the war, history itself, and history of war in general, as it's one of the only times something like this has ever happened. So let's get started. Now, the Great War started on July 28th, 1914, and kind of up to this point in December during the war, there had been some larger battles and movements, including the First Battle of Ypres, but there hadn't been a lot of really big things um, kind of happening during this time. Now, on both sides of the front, the soldiers and governments believed that they would kind of be at war for a few months, issues would resolve, and everyone would be home by Christmas of 1914. Now in these early months there wasn't a lot of animosity between just the regular soldiers on the ground, but it was based more in the higher ups and the governments, as unfortunately most wars are. Now internationally many people felt this as well, as peace initiatives were requested by uh, particularly women's groups throughout Europe. Many held small protests and wrote letters into their governments calling for the war to come to an end. Even the Pope got involved and wrote a letter to the world uh, basically saying to cease violence as the Christmas season was coming up. Now back in the trenches, this early type of trench warfare was different than trench warfare you would see later on in the Great War or even World War II. There was what was later coined by historian Tony Ashworth as a kind of system to trench warfare at this time. It was called the live and let live system where there was an abstaining of violence from both sides of the trenches for various reasons. Now Ashworth discovered this um, through research of written testimonies or journals from soldiers at the war, uh, from different newspapers who wrote reports, and personal testimonies of both British and German troops on either side of the war. Now there was a multitude of reasons for these packs and they usually lasted for kind of various time periods. So it wasn't a consistent thing across the trenches but more kind of individual and localized. Basically it ended up being a you don't bother me, I don't bother you, and we both get to live. Now the week before December 25th, the men on both sides of the trenches realized that they probably weren't going to be getting home for Christmas this year. So soldiers started uh, singing from the trenches of various Christmas carols in their native languages. They eventually on Christmas Day began leaving their trenches with white flags and meeting in no man's land, where they exchanged seasonal greetings and talked. They would even exchange souvenirs, food. They would hold burials for soldiers, they would uh, kind of pick up their dead and swap prisoners. And more particularly, what I'm going to be talking about today is they played games of football. Now there are multiple and I mean quite a few testimonies that these games did happen in many areas along the front lines, including testimonies from British and German soldiers more particularly. Now football had been played professionally in Germany since the 1890s and was also played in the UK professionally even earlier than that. So it was a common and well known game amongst everyone on both sides of the trenches. And because it was a relatively simple game with minimal equipment and it was international, the game was played and understood by both sides, even with different language barriers. There is evidence that games were played amongst regiments behind the front lines. Um, they would have kind of tournaments between different groups or platoons on both sides, even prior to uh, the Christmas season, uh, but also there is documentation that games were actually played between British and German soldiers. Now legend has it that one game in particular saw the British and German soldiers uh, get together to compete in a full 90 minute 11 person uh, game. The Germans would later win the game two to three. Now this particular game was documented by a doctor from the British Rifle Brigade and later published in a newspaper. However, the general of the Rifle Brigade denied that the game ever happened. The British losing and the fraternization of two opposing sides of a war didn't really look that great for the public, especially with all these peace initiatives going on. 
Now another well-documented game occurred between the German 133rd Royal Saxon Regiment and a group of Scottish soldiers. They played a full regimented game of 90 uh, minutes with 11 players on each side. Now this is backed up by a detailed account by German witness Lieutenant Johannes Niemann who said of the game. I grabbed my binoculars and looking cautiously over the parapet saw the incredible sight of our soldiers exchanging cigarettes, snops, and chocolate with the enemy. Later, a Scottish soldier appeared with a football which seemed to come out from nowhere, and a few minutes later, a real football match got underway. The Scots marked their goal mouth with strange caps and we did the same with ours. It was far from easy to play on the frozen ground, but we continued, keeping rigorously to the rules despite the fact that it only lasted an hour and we had no referee. A great many of the passes went wide, but all the amateur footballers, although they must have been very tired, played with huge enthusiasm. He later continued, uh, us Germans really roared when a gust of wind revealed that the Scots wore no drawers underneath their kilts and hooted and whistled every time they caught a glimpse of the posterior belonging to one of yesterday's enemies. But after an hour's play when our commanding officer heard about it, he sent an order that we must put an end uh, to the game. A little later, we drifted back to our trenches and the fraternization ended. So with his very specific account of details that happened, um, is very important to the actual history knowing that these games did actually occur. I also wanted to mention something um, from a soldier by the name of Bertie Felstad, who died in 2001 as one of the kind of last remaining World War I veterans and veterans of the 1914 Christmas Truce. He said that on Christmas Day, the 15th Battalion Royal Welsh Fusiliers took part in the famous truce, um, singing songs, exchanging gifts, and then later played football. In an interview I found on them, he also said this, which I think really neatly kind of sums up um, how the soldiers felt about one another and how the truce actually occurred. Now, my battalion never allowed itself to have any political feelings about the Germans. A professional soldier's duty was simply to fight whomever the king ordered him to fight. The 19... 14 Christmas fraternization in which the battalion was among the first to participate had had the same professional simplicity, no emotional hiatus, this but a commonplace of military, military tradition, an exchange of courtesies between officers and opposing armies. Now, in my research for this video, I did find some historians arguing that these football games actually never happened or didn't happen to the extent that people believe. But I found multiple eyewitness accounts and testimonies from soldiers on both sides of the war who said that they did. Now, these football games may be a little glamorized, as a lot of history is, but I'll believe dozens of World War I veterans accounts over a similar thing over a historian who said that they never played the game because the ground wasn't flat enough. If they wanted to play football, they were going to play football. Later, on December 26th, the fighting resumed and the war was back on. The live and let live trench warfare system didn't stick around very long and there would not be a repeat of the Christmas truce in 1915. Although there is evidence that there are scattered moments in 1915, they were not as widespread as they were in 1914. It's believed that this was a mixture of pressure from the higher ups, but also by 1915, the war had dragged on to a point that kind of animosity was growing between the soldiers uh, across the trench from you. Now it's estimated that over 100,000 British and German troops took part in the 1914 Christmas truce. So it was not just a couple groups of men here and there, it was a rather widespread thing that happened over a rather large war area. Now this would be the first and only time something like this has ever happened in recorded war history. It's not very often that you get opposing sides of a war coming together to celebrate a mutual holiday and then resume going back to fighting the next day. Now it's also an important moment in sport history as it shows how a game like football could unite people from various backgrounds who spoke different languages and who only a few days were probably shooting at one another. So the simple game of football helped bring together opponents during what was the greatest war the world had ever seen up till that point. And for a few moments, thousands of men were kicking a ball around on the mortar hold ground of no man's land celebrating Christmas. 
So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of information on the 1914 Christmas truce football games. Unfortunately for many, Christmas will be at home this year with limited members of friends and family around. So in the spirit of the 1914 Christmas truce, celebrate the holidays with whomever you can, wherever you can, doing whatever you can. And if you can get outside and kick around a football or go for a skate for a little bit, do so but at a respectable distance. <laughs> Thanks and happy holidays to everyone. Bye now.